Today we are going out into dreams. Unfortunately though, it is not pretty cute little daydreams. No, this is quite horrific nightmares where Cthulhu and his friends are chasing us. We are stuck inside of a dream and we are trying to, well, escape that dream. In the game Dream Escape. This is where you will venture out into different locations. You will jump through portals and come out into brand new locations. This is a heavy narrative driven story game where you will build up your character, you will get new items and you will explore a huge world. Now, what I have here in front of me is just the prototype, because this game will go out on GameFound pretty, pretty soon. So, what I have here on the table today might not look like the game that you will have on the table once this game is all completed. But this video here will give you a good idea of what the game will look like. And I will show you how to play the game. I will show you the setup of this game, and I will take you through the different phases of this game. So let's just jump into this dream. At the start of the game we need to choose a character that we would like to portray as and take their card. These cards are double sided. This here is tier 1, the starting side. The other side would be tier 2. This is an upgraded side. We will take this card and then we will slide it into the dashboard, making it fit nicely. Now if we look at this dashboard here, we can see some symbols surrounding the portrait of our character. This up here are the different skills that our character is good at, meaning that we will get to roll an extra rune when we are challenged by these skills. And down here we have the dreamer abilities. Again, these are some abilities that this character can use during their travels. Up here on the right side we have four different stats. We have Deja Vu, Lucid Dreamings, Sanity and Vitality. And to know what your character have at the start of the game, you need to look at the character card. In this case Rosalinda has 1 Deja Vu, 1 Lucid Dreaming, 10 Sanity and 11 Vitality. At the bottom of this dashboard we can see the experience track. At the start we start by putting the yellow cube on the first spot on the experience track. As we gain experience we will of course be moving this cube up. When we land on one of the squares that has a symbol in it we can choose to gain that skill or benefit. Next we need to take the one shard card. If we are playing nightmare mode that is. If we are playing quest mode we should take the 4 shard card and place it next to the dashboard. And we will start our game with 3 elder runes, the ones that have half a star of each side. In this game we also have items. This symbol here is the symbol for items. We have two different decks. One that is open from the start of the game, meaning that you can choose these cards, but another deck that is locked at the start of the game. And you can see that these cards are locked by looking at the top and the bottom of the cards and see a little lock, meaning that these cards can't be chosen from the start of the game. At the start of the game we get the first item card, being the 001 card. This is the strange heirloom. So we take this card, but then we also get to draw three more cards from this deck. But you can only draw from 002 to 14. So from these cards here, you need to draw three cards at random. So besides the strange heirloom, you also get to draw three cards at random from these 13 cards and then place them next to our dashboard. But if we look at the top of our dashboard we can see the item symbols. And there are three spaces for items up here. This means that if you put your items above these symbols, these cards will now be protected. Meaning that they cannot fade away during your gameplay. 
And if we look at the one shard card, we can see that there is actually a space here as well. And if you put one of your items here, it will also be protected. So let's do that. Now some of these cards will actually give us extra runes. Like the strange heirloom here for example. This card here will grant us one elder rune. Looking like this. But if we look at this little symbol here we can see that there is a small symbol in the bottom left corner as well. This represents the back side of the rune. And this here is the symbol for, well, bad things that's going to happen. But I will tell you more about that in a little bit. What we can see here are some of the portal cards. Below these portal cards we have a story deck. These should be sorted out by the symbol in the top left corner. This symbol corresponds to the symbol on the portal card. The story deck should be shuffled and then we need to take their corresponding portal card and put it above the story deck. And then we sort them out on the table. Just like the items, some of these portal cards are locked. And we can see that by looking in the top right corner. Again, these should be sorted out, shuffle the story decks, and then put by themselves to the side of the other story decks. But we also have location portal cards as well. Again, these are locked, but they also have a grey backside. And beneath them we again have a story card going with the portal card. We can also see the difference by looking in the top left corner to see that this symbol is actually an octagonal and not round as the other normal location cards. These are kept to the side for now as well. This here is the event track card, meaning this is where we will track the event during our gameplay. At the start of the game we take the event track token and we place it on the bottom of the event track card. Once we will move up during the event, we will of course also move the token. We also need to sort out the threat deck, the condition deck, and the lore deck. And then we need to sort out the different tokens and place them out on the table. So now we have done the setup and we are ready to venture out into this horrific dream. This game has two different modes. We have the nightmare mode, this is where you only get one shard. And if you manage to escape, well you win. If you lose your shard, which you probably will, you will lose the game. And this is kind of like a one-off game. You set up, you play, and then you're done. But we also have a quest mode, and this is a quite longer game. This you can play over several several sessions and the game will go on and you will have more shards in front of you. Once you have played your session you pack it down and you save the game at the end of that session. During your next session well you will pack up and you will keep on going from where you saved it. Until you manage to either lose all your shards, meaning losing the game, or escaping this horrific dream and winning the game. Each round in this game consists out of six different phases. And the first phase is the encounter phase. But I think we need to take a look at the cards before we go into the different phases so you understand what I'm talking about. First let's take a look at the shard cards. These cards here represent the dreamer's largest dream fragments. If you would have done quest mode, you would have to have four shards. But this here is nightmare mode, so we only have one shard. When during your gameplay you lose all shards, well the game ends immediately. Because this means that Cthulhu now completely gains control over your dream. Up here we can see three different symbols. These symbols corresponds with the symbols on the portal cards. So at the start of your game, you should take the portal cards corresponding to these symbols and at random draw one of them, representing the location that you are going to start your dream. Once you have drawn one of these cards at random, you also need to take 
the corresponding story decks. And you can see that these are corresponding by looking at the symbol in the top left corner again. This card is now flipped over to its active side and placed in front of you. And the story deck is placed next to your gaming area, as you will be using these shortly. Now if we keep on looking at the shard card, we can see some text up here. This here is something that you will gain at the start of your game. Meaning that here I gain one more deja vu and I get to draw one extra item. And at the bottom we have some kind of ability. In this case here, we can store one item card on this card and it will be protected. And we also get to swap the item we place here for another card at any time. Next we have items. And this is of course items that you can use during your gameplay. This symbol up in the left corner means that you can use this item to barter with. This symbol over here means that there is a chance that this card might fade away from your memory. Meaning that you might be able to lose this card. Which is why it's a good thing to protect the cards that you really want to keep. Here we have a name of whatever item you have. Down here we have some flavor text. And down here we have some extra abilities. In this case here you actually have a chance to save this card. By testing your repair skill. And beat number two. Out on the sides here we can see some patterns. On some of these items there will be symbols in these spots. These symbols here are called key codes. And if you manage to combine these symbols that you have on your item with the symbols on one of the story cards, it means that you have now managed to unlock this story card. Number 546. And now you can jump to that story right away. Meaning that the one that you are present on goes away and now you are instead reading this text here. If we now look at the portal cards, we start by looking on the inactive side. As I told you before, we can see the symbol up here in the left corner representing what symbol this portal's story deck refers to. We can see a name of this location and at the bottom we can see which skills are mostly used in this place. Now if we flip this over to the active side, meaning the side that are supposed to be up when you take this story, we can see a free action in the center of the card. This free action will trigger once we reach step number 3 on the event steps. And this is why we need to keep a track of what event we have gone through. But it's not just all good. We can see on the first level here we will lose one sanity. Here we gain one free action. Here we get to draw condition card. On the next step we will gain one deja vu. Here we get to draw story card 537. And up here we get to draw story card 405. And depending on which location you are at, meaning which portal card you have in front of you, these will of course change. Some story cards will give you a threat challenge. These cards here are challenges that will come in your way and try to stop you. In the top left corner we can see the challenge penalty. This is what you will lose if you fail this challenge. Up here we have the threat faction icon. In the middle we have a little picture showing what we're facing and a name of whatever we're facing. And in the bottom we have a challenge stage test. Meaning that we need to go through these different steps to be able to defeat this challenger. So here we would need to test bluff and or might. To be able to beat the first challenge, we need to have a success of 3. Meaning that if we test strengths, we need to get 3 or higher. The second test would be to perform an alert or entertain test. And the last one, dodge, 
or a tag text. And we need to complete all of these three to be able to defeat this cultist. In the bottom, you can see the rewards that you will get for completing each stage. When you have completed each stage, you immediately get the rewards. The symbols in red you have to do to be able to complete the challenge. But some of these threats have black symbols instead. Then they are optional. Meaning that on this card here, you have to do the first test. But the second and the third are optional. But if you do not complete these two tests, you would of course not get the rewards. And next we have conditions. The conditions are, well, conditions that you get from different story cards outcome. At the top we have a name of the condition. Out here we have a condition type icon. In the middle we have some flavor text. And in the bottom we can see whatever this condition will do. And you get to remove these conditions by specific story outcomes, reward on other story cards, or by spending an elder sign, meaning this one here. These condition cards usually have a little text saying that you should track whatever going on on the card with these tokens here. Here for example it says that we should place three of these tokens on this card when we gain the card. And every time we suffer damage we need to remove the same amount of tokens as we suffer damage. And if all the tokens are removed, well so is the condition card. Once they are removed, they go back into the condition deck. Last but not least, we have the lore cards. And these are quite important, because these will give you the information and knowledge that you need to win the game. Up here we have a little text telling us where we are, and what it is. In this case, this is a location. A little picture, and some flavor text. Again, we have the little keynotes out here on the side helping us to unlock new story cards in the future. But we also have an ability text, telling us what this lore will help us with in the future. And all these lore cards are locked from the start of the game, meaning that you will only gain these when you see the lore symbol giving you this card in the game. The lore symbol being the symbol of a book. So whenever you see the lore symbol giving you a card number, well then you gain that card. And you should not look at any of the others, because well, it will spoil the story. And lastly we have the story cards. Now these are the cards that pretty much will tell us what is going on, where we are and what we're facing. As I showed you before, we have the deck icon up in the left top corner showing us which portal this card belongs to. We have a unique card code. These are the codes that we will unlock down here by the keypads, but also when the story tells us to move on to a specific number, these are the ones we will be looking for. Some of these cards will have a secret icon up here and down here. And depending on where or what we're doing, these will have different functions. And down here we have a little information about what we are facing. Usually there are some different tests that we need to do. Here we have for example three different things that we could test, depending on what we want to do. Here we would gain lore card 1, 2, 4 right away and then we would have to do the skill test. And pass entertainment 3. But if we want to pick any of the other two outcomes, well we can do that. Out on the sides we have the keynotes that I told you about before. If you find the matching pair on another card, well you will unlock a new story card. This one will be put down in a memory pile and we would go on to whatever number we have opened. On the other side of these cards, we have a success side or a failure side. Depending on if we pass the test or, well, fail the test. Depending on which of the three options on the other side we chose, we would read that option. If we would fail the test, there might be some punishments for us down here. But if we succeed the test, we would get the rewards showing down here. 
We get to keep this card for these rewards and spend them when we want to. However, when we do spend the card, we must choose only one reward of these that shows. So now we know what the different cards mean. There are also some tokens in this game, but I will show you that as the gameplay goes on. Now, like I said, in this game, each round consists of six different phases. And the first phase is the encounter phase. In the encounter phase, the first thing we do is to draw the top card from the story deck. Now, as I showed you before, these are the cards that will tell us about where we are, what is going on, maybe we're fighting somebody, maybe we're fleeing somebody, maybe we are negotiating with somebody or just meeting up with somebody. There are many, many, many different story cards with many different stories on. So now we have done the encounter part. We have taken the card and read the text. Now phase number two is the reaction. And this is where we need to choose one of the available reaction options. And depending on which of these three choices that we choose, well, we will of course have to do different things. But before we do the challenge, we should also look in the top left corner of this card. Because if there is this red symbol, we need to move the event token tracker up one step. And when we move up our token on the event track, we also need to look at our active portal card to see if something happens. In this case here, Rosalinde loses one sanity. On the story card that we have just drawn now, we have found some brown little camouflage beast. And now we have some choices. We can try to follow them, we can ignore them, if lore card 015 would be in play, we could choose the third option. Since we don't have lore card 015, we cannot choose this now. Rosalinde is pretty good at stealth, so I think that we should try to follow them. Once we have chosen our reaction, we now go into phase number three, and this is the resolution action. This is where we get to test the skill to see if we pass or fail. When we do tests, we throw these runes, called Elder Runes. Now, depending on which runes you have, you will have a bigger or smaller rate of success. Here, for example, I only have half a rune on each side, meaning that I need to combine this with another rune that fits the pattern to actually get a success. And you can get a different amount of runes. You always start with three at the start of the game. But some items, like for example the trusty slippers here, will give you extra runes. If you have the skill you are trying to test on your skill tree here around your portrait, you will also get an extra rune. And you can also gain focus tokens. These tokens are placed above one of your character's skills around your portrait. And a focus token means that when you test this skill, you will get one master rune into your base runes instead of just the normal fortune rune. And there are several ways to get extra runes. So always keep a note of what kind of items you have, what kind of cards you have that might help you in your gameplay and give you a bigger chance to actually succeed. But how do we actually succeed? Well, let's take a look at that. So to complete this challenge, we need a stealth of three or higher. So now we get to roll these runes out on the table. And we will do that by simply rolling them as we would do with a die. A full star means that we will get a success. A half star can be matched up by their counterpart to combine one star. But as you see, not all sides will fit together. They need to form a full star. After we have made the test, we go into phase number four to see what outcome we have. In this case here, Rosalinda actually got three successes. So she passed the test. Some of these runes actually have a bad side as well. This symbol here is a cursed side, because it got the Cthulhu symbol. 
Meaning that if you roll this result, you need to take one of these tokens here and cover up one of your abilities. This down here is your abilities. So if you gain one of these Cthulhu tokens, you need to cover up one of those spaces that does not already contain a Cthulhu token. Once you cannot place any more Cthulhu tokens, meaning that all four spaces are full of tokens, you need to remove all of the white tokens. You need to now take one of the red Cthulhu tokens and cover up one of your character's skills instead. This represents that now Cthulhu is starting to mess with your mind. Blocking out skills so you cannot use them anymore in skill tests. When you have seven of these, well the game is over. If you are doing a trade skill test, you should always check your item cards if you have the bartering symbol. Because this will actually grant you successes in a trade skill test. Each point of barter test value will give you one success. But when you have used this value, you need to discard that item card. So during your gameplay you can of course use the item to get better results. But remember I told you that you also have abilities. And these abilities can also help you a lot. You can for example use them to enhance your skills by one, to remove tokens from cards that you don't want, to be able to switch something for another one, for example, spending lucid dreams to get more deja vu. There are a lot of things you can use your abilities to. But speaking of the deja vu and the lucid dreams over here, what do they actually do? Well, the deja vu could be used when you are facing specific story cards to, for example, remembering previous dreams. And you could spend one deja vu to bring back one story card from the memories, but also from the rewards area and shuffle it back into the story deck. You can use them to remember special location. If you spend three deja vu, you can immediately shift to a discovered location. And if you spend one deja vu, you can also use that one to gain one of these runes if you are in a threat challenge. But the lucid dream here can be used to gain more sanity. If you spend one lucid dream, you would gain two sanity, but also two vitality, even if they had dropped down to zero. And if you spend five lucid dream, you can actually go up a tier level, meaning that you get to flip your character card over to tier two. Or you can spend one lucid dream to gain two of these runes if you are in a threat challenge. When you flip your character card over to tier 2, you get more skills, but you also get more abilities. Plus, you will gain better stats. Depending on which character you have, these stats will enhance differently. Plus, you also get to discard one of the Cthulhu red tokens from your skill tree. Phase number 5 would be the result phase. This is where we need to check the backside of the card and depending on if we failed or if we succeeded, well we should of course read the corresponding side of the card. And we only read the test that we have failed or succeed, because we don't want to spoil anything, right? If there is a little cube on the card representing the experience cube, well then we get to move our little experience cube up the amount of cubes that there is on the card. Every time you gain experience up to one of these symbols, you can choose to gain that benefit. But if you choose to gain that benefit, you need to reset your experience tracker. Depending on if we failed or succeed, we will also get some penalties or rewards. Phase number six is the memory phase. And this is where we take the story card that we have just failed or succeeded and put them in our memory pile, because they do not go back into the active story deck. If the story deck is empty, meaning that we have gone through all the cards and they are now all in the memory pile, then you gain an Elder Sign token and choose a new location that you would like to go to. But remember, these needs to be open meaning that they cannot be locked. 
Once we have chosen a deck, we simply change out the portal card and put the new active card out on the table. And now we are ready to go again. If ever a card should tell you to jump to a new location or a new portal card and that deck is in the memories, well then you need to bring those cards back into the active area. And now you might have a little bit of a benefit because now you pretty much remember what you have been through and you are stronger than ever my friend. Every now and then the results of either success or failures will tell you to change the deck. The red symbol here will tell you to take all the portal cards, not the lot ones, shuffle them and then select one new at random. You take all the story cards and you place out the new portal cards. And then you start over from phase number one. While this blue one here will let you choose which of the decks you would like to go to. So instead of this one here, you choose one at random, you get to choose one yourself by simply picking one you would like to go to. But it might tell you which type it should be. Here, for example, you get to choose any of the ship types. And some of these actually makes the choice for you, like this case here. While some of the results actually will discover new cards for you. These ones here with the octagon shape instead, remember? They are locked from the start because you do not know that they exist. But some of these outcomes will actually show you these locations and tell you to, well, make them active. And you would again do that by simply taking this card, placing it with the active side up in front of you, and taking the corresponding story deck. And that is how you play the game. You go through these six phases. Once you have done that, you go back to the first phase again. And this is actually quite a fast gameplay. Sooner or later you won't even think about the different phases, you will just play. Once you have found the last gate in this story, well you win the game because you manage to flee. But if you get seven of these little Cthulhu tokens on your character sheet, well then you lose. If you play quest mode and you are on your fourth and last shard card and that one goes away, well then you lose as well. And every now and then you need to, well, get rid of these cards and get a new one. In that case, you need to reset the gaming area. You lose your items, except the first one, that one came for free, remember? But you also lose haunted cards, except the super haunted cards, because they follow you until you get rid of them for real. So you better get rid of them fast. But you also reset your experience, and then you are ready to go again. Until you manage to flee, or you face Cthulhu face on and lose the game. This game is pretty damn awesome. I mean, if you like a linear story where everything just goes according to plan and you follow a story, this might not be for you because you are jumping around from different places, from different situations to different portals, locations and so on. But I really like this. I like the way you build your character. I like the way you build your skills. I like the way you are forced to go into different situations that you probably don't want to be in. I love that you have different choices. I love that you can unlock new stories along the way and simply just jump to a whole new branch if you want to. I really enjoy this game. If you're into solo gaming, if you like character building, if you like story mode, if you like to read on the cards and really get into this thick story, well then I think that you are gonna love this game. It's a quite easy setup, it does not take that long time. To tear it down does not take that long time either, as long as you just sort it up in the right way in the box. And the same thing when you save the game and you tear it down. You have this little box where you put all the tokens and cards in that you have here in front of you on your dashboard, and as long as you just put the cards down in the right order, well, it really does not take that long time. The artwork itself is quite realistic, it's beautiful, I mean even the enemies are nicely done and as I told you this is just a prototype, meaning that I don't even have all the cards, I don't even have everything here in front of me, there will be much more in the final version of this beautiful and well made game. 
There you have it, my friend. That was Dream Escape for you. This game will be out on GameFound on the 24th of October, 2023. So if you want to know more about this game, well, check out the links down in the description. If you like my video, why not subscribe to me? Why not give me a thumbs up or throw in a comment? But as usual, my friend, the most important thing here is to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out, my friend.